Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Now this isn't my usual type of content, but I wanted to discuss this topic now as Gaijin continues to forge ahead into more modern aircraft. The question I want to answer here is, what characteristics make an aircraft a 5th generation fighter and critically, what are the differences between 4th and 5th generation fighters? The real answer might surprise you as it's not so clear cut. Air forces around the world are at a crossroads at the moment. Existing fighters that we've known since the 1970s are losing their potency. Newer technologies have enabled fighter aircraft that are exponentially more capable, but at a cost. For example, the Canadian and Finnish Air Forces are in the midst of making a choice. They can buy fighters with 5th generation capabilities or stick with older and less capable 4th generation fighters. Now I'm going to come back to the choices of Canada and Finland because it's relevant to the discussion. But let's define some terms here. The characteristics that make a fighter fifth generation are not necessarily universally agreed upon by principal nations that can build them, namely the US, Russia, and China. Now I am aware that the UK, Japan, and South Korea are working on their own fifth generation fighters, but they're still in development right now, so I'm not really going to talk about those. But getting back to the others, the prevailing consensus is that fifth generation fighters have all aspect radar stealth as a core capability in addition to stealthy infrared signatures. We also have advanced low probability of intercept, active electronically scanned array radars. Additionally, fifth generation fighters will almost always need internal weapon bays to maintain their stealth. The lack of parasitic drag offered by internal weapons bays contribute to the next characteristic, which is supercruise capability. Supercruising aircraft are capable of sustaining supersonic plus flight without the aid of an afterburner. Now this isn't some circus trick, the aircraft isn't stripped down and running min fuel just to achieve this. No, it, it must be capable of super cruising with a useful weapon and fuel load. Fifth generation fighters also possess something called super maneuverability. This is achieved by thrust vectoring and a high thrust to weight ratio. Now there is an open debate out on whether super maneuvering fighters are even relevant in a fifth generation arena, because merging with an enemy means he probably threw away all of your advantages. The last characteristic is network centricity. Fifth generation fighters serve as a data fusion platform and act as force multipliers for other air assets, land assets, and sea assets. So fifth generation fighters, such as the F-22, which is no longer in production, the F-35, the J-20, and the Su-57, possess these capabilities on a spectrum meaning some are more capable than others, but it depends on who is asking and who is telling. What I mean here is that there is a minimum eligibility criterion that an aircraft must meet to be considered fifth generation, but it may not meet all of the characteristics I just listed. You can consider fifth generation fighter as an unregulated term, and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. All right, so if that was clear as mud, things are gonna get even a little bit more opaque here. So obviously the F-15, F-16, F-18 Hornet, the MiG-29, and Su-27 are generally accepted as fourth generation fighters by most industry standards. These are baseline designs started in the mid 1970s and for the most part, they've been continuously refined for the last 30 to 40 years. So this leads us to this gray zone, this nebulous region of significantly improved airframes based on the originals, like the Su-30 and Su-35 the uh, F-16E now, the F-15EX, the F-18 Super Hornet, the Eurofighter, and even the uh, Jazz 39 Gripen E. All these fighters I listed have varying degrees of 5th gen capability. So although they've been continuously developed, these aircraft are not 5th gen. They are refinements of existing designs and are defined loosely as 4th generation plus or generation 4.5 fighters. Many of these 4th Gen Plus or Gen 4.5 aircraft have some elements of 5th generation fighters, but certainly not all. For example, advanced ASA radars are usually present in all Gen 4.5 designs, but you may not get all aspects stealth or super crews. So here, let's take a look at this chart of the 10 most advanced fighters. The top row represents some very capable fighters, yet they are all 4th Gen Plus or 4.5 Gen at best. All have active electronically scanned array radars, but not all have stealth. Some have super crews, but not all are network centric. 
None of them have internal weapon bays on the top row, but you can get some great hardware on the 4th Gen Plus row for a great price. Alright, so we've covered a lot here, which leads me back to the Canadian and Finnish fighter competition. The capabilities of 5th generation fighters are quite expensive, and the unit cost of the F-22 is $125 million. If you want all aspects stealth, ASA radar, super cruise, super maneuverability, and network centricity, you're going to have to pay top dollar. Canada is in the midst of deciding between the F-18 Super Hornet, which is $66 million a copy, and the Super Hornet was just eliminated by the way. You're also evaluating the Rafal, which was $120 million, the Jazz 39 Gripen E, or $60 million a copy, and the Eurofighter, which was $124 million a copy. All these are 4.5 generation planes. The Rafal and Eurofighter bids were unable to satisfy some Canadian requirements, so they dropped out of the bid early. The only 5th gen fighter in the group was the F-35, which was $78 million a copy. As a 5th generation fighter for only $78 million, that seems like the deal of the century. Moving on to Finland, they've already chosen the F-35, becoming the 14th nation to offer the aircraft. After evaluating the 4.5 gen competition, which included the Rafal, the Super Hornet, the Ripon E, and the Eurofighter. Now what in the hell does all this have to do with War Thunder? I wanted to at least put my two cents in before the inevitable. As Gaijin closes out the rest of the third generation jets, we're going to start knocking on the door of 4th gen and 4.5 gen. Hell, we've already had updates to radar warning receivers with realistic sounds. 5th generation fighters will eventually come because it's content, full stop. I know many people don't want to see the game progress to this point, but it will. I just wanted to provide a perspective on what constitutes 4th gen, 4.5 gen or, or 4 gen plus and 5th generation jet for context before we start to get down the rabbit hole. Alright and that's the video for today. I want to cut it off now before it gets too long. But what are your comments and questions? I just felt I needed to put some commentary on this. I see the terms being thrown around all the time and I was starting to get a little bit frustrated about it. If you like what you uh, saw though, uh, go ahead and hit that like button. It really helps me out with the algorithm and hopefully I'll see you in a future video. Thanks.